Hey, hey. I said that I was going to record this video for you. I'm going to make it a two-parter. I'm going to send you the second part after your surgery so you have less to think about and we just keep it simple. So when it comes to tracking um, medical equipment, materials, I'll say, and prescriptions and supplements in a hospital setting. It's like super important when you think you have MCAS because that information, whether you tolerate it or don't tolerate specific things, is going to give you a lot of really important information down the road for avoiding and curating what you put on and in your body, which is going to help you in future procedures or future emergency settings or future, you know, medical procedures or even just like what you're taking on a daily basis or having your household. Um, so the best and easiest way to do it is set up your phone with, I don't know if you have an Android or an Apple, but set up your phone with a shared album um, in your photos app and share that with whoever your person's going to be. So if your husband or your partner or whoever, maybe a family member who's gonna be your supporting person, or if you have multiple supporting people, have all of them as members of this shared album. Um, then as you go through your day, you literally wanna just explain to the nurses and to the medical staff and the doctors that you are documenting what um, prescriptions and adhesives and bandages and saline flushes and IV bags are being used because you have so many sensitivities, you want to document what is working for you. I have found that if you say that you're trying to document for if you have a reaction, they like think you're being a hypochondriac or that you're being fatalistic or that you're making things up or whatever. But if you say that you're, you have so many allergies, you want to document what works, they're like, oh yeah, for sure. Like, like let's document what works um and that's obviously just also kind of positive speaking positive things into existence um that hopefully it's all gonna work right <laughs> i don't want you to have any negative reactions so um when it comes to prescriptions whether it's vials of liquid medication they're putting into an iv or like um, an injection of some kind um or if we're talking about like pills um, I don't think, I mean, maybe they'll have you on some kind of pain patch or nausea patch, also any patches, all of those, anything that is actual medication, there's an N, something called an NDC number um, on every single pharmaceutical or medical medication in the U.S. That's how the FDA tracks everything and makes sure everything is kosher. Um, <laughs> and so that is what you want to capture. You need the brand name, you need the NDC number. Um, you often need to also have in the picture dosage. Sometimes this means like taking multiple photos of the same item. So like, for example, sorry, my arm is like really dying. Hold on. Okay. Switching hands. Um, sometimes you are going to have like, for example, like a medication vial, like maybe they're putting an H1 or H2 blocker or something else via IV. Um, it's a circular object. So often uh, you have to take a picture of it from multiple angles. So you kind of have to spin the bottle, like capture the front, capture the side, capture the other side kind of thing. Um, some things are easier if they're on boxes. There may be a side that shows the brand name, like the NDC number, maybe uh, the dose, the model number. You also need to know the method of um, delivery. And sometimes when you're searching for things later, it's actually going to benefit you to know, like, was it a white pill? Was it a blue pill? Was it a red pill? Was it an orange pill? Um, because their company, if you happen to, like, have obscured the NDC number or forgotten the NDC number, having that information, um, even, like, the imprint on the pill and what color it is, is going to help you be able to identify it later. Um it may seem silly, but it's also important, really important to get pictures of things like tape adhesives they're using on you or um, what type of um, needle or IV port they might be using. Um, what kind of saline flush? My daughter had an anaphylactic reaction to a saline flush. I've had severe 
allergic reactions to saline flushes also uh, by the same brand. We apparently are sensitive not to the saline, because that's literally just salt water, but to the packaging of that item. Um, so by, and again, I hope you have no reactions, right? Like, I'm not trying to be negative here. I'm just trying to explain the lay of the land to you. Um, so you want to capture pictures of all of that. I once had a stitch that I literally one stitch from a dermatology biopsy that had to be done to rule out some cancer, which luckily was ruled out. But that one stitch for the 10 days I had it in gave me a mast cell reaction and a fever because something in that stitch my body was allergic to. But luckily I took a picture of that package. So I know never to have those sutures used on me again. Um, I've had reactions to like bandage wraps um, because I don't do well. I know across the board, my skin, I have EDS, um, hypermobile EDS, also my MCAS, like I can't do most adhesives. And so uh, wraps are a good alternative, but I've had allergic reactions to wraps. So it's important for me personally to take pictures of even wraps and gauzes that are used on me because I've had reactions to gauzes. <laughs> um, again, I'm hoping your body is happy and has none of these issues, but it's good to do to photograph as you go. Uh, maybe ointments if they happen to be, it's probably going to be too soon to be putting ointments on um, your incision sites. But, you know, I wish that I had been tracking these things for years. I only was just diagnosed about a year ago uh, with mast cell activation syndrome. And um, I really, I really would have benefited from tracking things or tracking all this stuff for my daughter. Um, remember saline bags, saline flushes, um, IV bag medications. I think that's mostly everything. Pretty much anything that goes on or in your body. Um, you're going to want to take a picture of and you can share why and you can ask for help in documenting it um, from your family uh, or whoever friend whoever might be taking you to the procedure but I hope this is helpful I'm going to send you so part two I'm going to send you a video where I show I am going to send you a link to a google sheet form that I made uh, that I use to track my uh, excipients, which is the fancy word for inactive ingredients and medications, but I also use it to track other medical grade materials that need to be tracked like adhesives or even I also use it to track body products um, because I have so many reactions. It helps to have everything in one place. Oh, sorry. Again, my other arm out hurts. <laughs> um, so that is most of that. Um, also in part two, I'll be sending you two websites where you can actually look up what excipients are in medications. Um, and I will also share my experience of contacting companies after the fact when I've had a reaction to identify what uh, packaging is used, especially when it comes to things like vials of medication or pre-filled syringes that may have been used or IV bags that has more the packaging has more implication because the micro particles from that packaging um, or from what the needle has to pierce to get into a vial to suck out the medication you get micro particles of all those materials that the needle is puncturing um, so it's important to track all of those things and it can be difficult to identify packaging information online. So contacting the company ends up being important. Um, so if you were to ever in the future have a reaction to any of the, to one thing, you'd be able to go back and contact the company about all the things you tolerated to rule out what you might be reacting to by knowing what you tolerate. Um, cause so knowing what you tolerate is just as important as knowing what you react to. Um, I hope this is helpful. I hope that you have a really uh, successful surgery tomorrow. I'm sending you a lot of love. I know it can be a mental health landmine, just getting, seeking and advocating for and getting the care that we need, even when what we've been hoping and pushing for arrives. But I believe in you and you can do this and I'm sending you lots of love. Um, and I, if you have any questions, please, let me know. I'm here to help. And I will send you the second half um, with the easy ways to actually track things once you have all of these photos. Um, 
I'll send you that after your surgery once you're healed up some so you don't have to worry about that now. Just capturing the pictures is the most important part. Also, a little hack. I don't know if Android does this. I have an iPhone. But in the photos shared album, um, you have the ability to add comments or captions. That's a great way to say like, oh, did not tolerate this well or... I did great with this or, oh, I got a little rash after that. That way later on you and your healthcare team, um, allergists, or even your family members who are helping you track all of this can, um, have you, I don't know. It helps jog the memory on like what went well, what went well and what didn't go well, if there was any kind of immediate result for you. So big love. Talk to ya. Bye.